Welcome to this episode of Home Built Workshop. Today, we're gonna make this pile of parts into a belt grinder. I believe the first time I saw a belt grinder was in a Jimmy Duresta video, and I remember thinking, man, that thing is really cool. It looks really super versatile. So I started looking into it a little bit more. They're fairly expensive, but it looks super handy and I want one. So rather than spending the two or three or four thousand dollars that a lot of them do cost, I scrounged up a whole bunch of parts. I've been saving parts for probably over a year. As I find a piece I think I might be able to use, I just set it in a pile and my pile is growing and growing. It's time to get this together. For the main frame, for this, I'm gonna use this piece here. It's already welded up. This is actually a piece from one of those hitch rack luggage carriers. And this is the piece that actually allows the luggage rack to fold up. I never used that. This thing's been sitting around for several years. I'm gonna hack it up. We're gonna use this. So this is gonna become the main frame. I need to cut this little tab off, weld on a flat plate which is gonna be this. The steel I'm using for the base plates is just some eighth inch drops that I got somewhere. I need to mark out holes in all four corners for bolts. I think if I bolt it down in all four corners, it's gonna be plenty strong. I'm just gonna use a Sharpie and my calipers to lay out where I need to drill the holes. If you have some layout fluid, that would work really well, but I don't have any, so a Sharpie works just fine. Now I'll just drill those holes out. Since the piece is a little too big to fit in my drill vise, I've got it up against the fence and hopefully that'll hold it in place should the drill bit catch and want to sling the piece of metal around. Aha, it worked. Now that I have the mounting plate drilled for the mounting holes, now I can take this chunk and my angle grinder outside and cut this off and weld that plate on the bottom. But first, because I don't like sunburns, I don't have any hair to keep the sun off my head. Now I'm going to cut down a piece of square tubing and weld that to an identical mounting plate as the first one. This is going to be a support for the front of the frame. And just to seal up the bare metal, I'll just put a quick coat of random black paint. I'm not done welding and drilling yet, but I just want to seal it all up right now. Well, the welds aren't all that pretty, but it's good and solid. We're ready to attach this main frame to the base. My welder is really old and the liner is shot, so the feed on the wire is really unreliable. It'll go along well and then it'll stop and start, so you really get lousy welds with it. Once I have a little bit more shop space, it'll definitely be something that I'm upgrading. So now I'm just going to line this frame up with the edge of the aluminum plate and I'll use a transfer punch to mark the holes that I need to drill and tap. Now using a 3 8 16 tap, I'll just tap all those bolt holes. Make sure you reverse once in a while to clear the chips whenever you're tapping threads. Otherwise you risk the tap filling up with chips and breaking it off. And they're never fun to get out of a hole. I ordered some pillow block bearings that I'm gonna use and it actually is gonna work really cool with the holes that are already in here. So I got a piece of shaft, it's gonna go through the hole. And I'll just use a clamp to hold everything in place. I'll make sure that the shaft still turns once I have everything in alignment, and it does, so I'm gonna mark the holes. If you're wondering why I have the bearings at an angle, there's already an existing hole right here that's gonna interfere with the mounting hole of the bearing. So I just spun the housing a little bit. It's not gonna affect anything at all. Now I'll just drill and tap those mounting holes. This project has a lot of drilling and tapping. Anytime you're drilling or tapping metal to help with the whole process, it's pretty important to use some sort of lubricant. The oil that I like to use is called Tap Magic. It's this red and white can like this. This stuff works really good. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. It's just something that I really like 
and I would recommend it if you're looking for a cutting oil. Now I'll install the bearings. My piece of shaft is really long right now. That's because I don't know the exact length that I'm gonna need to cut it. I'll worry about that later. Next, we're gonna mount the motor. I'm gonna leave this pulley loose for right now until I know exactly where it needs to go on the shaft. I'm just gonna kinda get the motor in place roughly where it needs to go. I'll line it all up with a square and use a couple of clamps to hold it into place. And I'll grab my Sharpie and mark out the bolt holes. Now I can punch, drill, and tap those holes to mount the motor. With that part done, now I need to work on the plate that's gonna mount the platen and also hold the idler wheels. I have this piece of half inch aluminum plate that I'll mount everything to. I'll use a couple of pieces of square tubing as a straight edge and line the rollers up right in the corner. Then it's more drilling and tapping. Now you might be thinking, hey Jeff, that'd be great if I had all those parts and pieces, but I don't, so I can't build a belt grinder. Well. Let me tell you, I didn't have these either, and I promise you, I did not buy most of these materials that I'm using to make this. It's taken me about a year to come up with all the parts for this. I only bought the last few in the last week or so, getting ready for this project. All the flat aluminum plates, the bars, the motor, and a lot of the little bits and pieces, I just scrounged up over time. So believe me when I say if you're diligent in your search and you're patient, you can find these parts. Watch places like Craigslist or some of the Facebook yard sale pages or swap pages. You can find the parts and pieces you need. Now I can just attach the rollers using some bolts. Now actually the bolts, I don't have the right size so I'm going to have to go buy those. We're not quite ready to run this yet anyway so just for alignment purposes these long bolts will be fine. For the actual platen, I'm just going to measure the distance between the two rollers and cut this piece of square tubing to fit in between them. I'm going to use a hacksaw. I don't have a chop saw, so hacksaw it is. It's only 85 degrees in the shop, so what's a little more working out? And like every other time I use a hacksaw, this is taking way too long. I'll clamp it all into place, and we'll drill some holes so that we can attach the platen to the metal plate. Now I suppose if you're looking for a reason to buy a full size drill press instead of a bench top one, this might be a good reason. It's a little bit tricky on a small drill table to clamp something kind of large. But if you get creative enough, you'll figure it out. So now if I mock this up and I put the belt on and the platen in place, you can kind of see how this is going to work. What I need to do now is make an attachment point to attach this aluminum piece to the piece of steel that's going to slide right in there and lock down. There's already a, an existing screw hole in this aluminum plate. I think if I add another one right next to it, I'll be able to bolt this on using two bolts and that'll secure it pretty well. And now it's starting to look like something. So you can see your belt will go on here. It's going to ride up over these rollers. There's also needs to be a tensioner pulley right here. It also allows you to adjust the tracking. At some point is I need to make a spacer to bring it out just a little bit. That way everything's in alignment with the drive pulley. Right now I don't know exactly how far I need to bring it out. It all depends on how my tensioner arm works out 
and where I can position the drive wheel on the drive shaft. I'm going to use this piece of square tubing for the tensioner. I've got some little plates of steel that are conveniently already cut to this shape. I'm going to drill a pivot hole in them as well as in the steel tubing. Next I've got to get the tensioning arm and the tracking wheel together. Right now I've got it all mocked up. Kind of looks like a disaster right now because everything's kind of clamped into place. But the general idea is I'm going to weld some tabs at the back where, where this arm is going to pivot. That's going to allow it to go up and down. And then I've got the tracking wheel is going to be mounted to a piece of round shaft right here that'll allow it to pivot up and down and adjust the belt from side to side. So instead of trying to explain every little piece, let's get this welded up and then it'll all make sense. I'll tell you what, just finished welding up those brackets. Yeah, I got that so I don't get sparks on top of my head. It's really hot. <laughs> I need to take a break. Now that I know where all the parts are gonna live permanently, I'll drill and tap a hole for the bolt that'll adjust the tracking wheel. So you can see the bolt comes out this side. That'll push against the tracking wheel and allow me to adjust it. And some more drilling and tapping for the bolts that'll lock down the platen arm. All right, so I think I'm at a point where I've got all the drilling, the tapping, cutting, welding, everything done, I hope. Let's put this back together and see how many times I need to go to the hardware store to get the correct size bolts. That's cool. In case you didn't notice, there's a thunderstorm. So you're probably hearing thunder. Two of those springs didn't really seem strong enough, so I just doubled up on one side. Now it's got plenty of spring tension. It looks kind of weird. I'll keep an eye out for some springs that may work a little bit better. But for now, good. The very last thing I need to do is install this handle on the side so that I can pull it down to loosen the tension when I'm changing the belts. I don't know what this handle came from. It's just an old knurled handle, some bolt threads on there. I think we're ready to put a belt on this and try it out. Here we go. Moment of truth. I'm excited. Just put the belt on. Pull the platen out. And I'll tighten those bolts down. Right now there's no switch. That's another upgrade that I know I'll be doing in the future. Put in some kind of a power switch for right now. Let's plug this thing in. The tracking's a little off, so we'll try out the tracking adjustment. Ha! 
That's awesome. Man, am I excited. This turned out really, really cool. I know there's still a few things that I need to do yet, like find the correct springs. I need to build a little guard or something over the belt so that's not a safety hazard. I still need to trim off the drive shaft some. I need to make a tool rest for the front. I have a small piece of metal that'll work for the table, but I'm not 100% sure how I wanna do that yet because I do wanna swap out this square tubing for some solid square stock. I think it'll be a little bit more sturdy than the square tubing. Also right now, you can't get in close to the belt because of this aluminum piece here. A lot of the belt grinders have like a D shape to it, so this part's hollow. And I do wanna do that as well. I wanna cut it out a little bit below these mounting bolts for the platen and just cut that back some so that I do have a hollow space there so that I can remove the platen and do some slack belt grinding. Also I do want to replace these bolts that lock everything in place. I want to use some handles, some T-handles or something like that and get rid of these bolts. Maybe I could just weld a piece of round stock on them and make them into the handle. Something there that I want to upgrade as well as an on and off switch. But for now, the basic machine, it's done and it works. I am happy, I'm really excited. This is cool. So this goes to show that if you really wanna build something and you don't wanna spend a ton of money, you can do it. All you need is patience and a lot of time spent tracking down parts and pieces. So for this project, all I bought were a few bearings, a spring, some nuts and bolts, some pulleys, and these rollers. The rollers were the most pricey part, but they're not all that bad. You can find them online. There's a lot of places on eBay, as well as knife making supply websites that sell the roller kits, and that's where I bought them from. And I really am happy with the way this thing turned out. One of the biggest things I'm looking forward to is being able to try out all the different belts. There are so many belts for these. A machine like this is commonly used by knife makers for making knives, but I think there's like a bazillion other uses for something like this just because there's so many different belts that you can get tons and tons of options. But I am really happy with the way this turned out. If you guys enjoyed this project, please give it a thumbs up. Also, let me know down in the comments what you thought about this thing. Let me Give me your feedback on that. I'd love to hear it. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and all my social media links, as well as links to my website, Homebuilt Workshop, are down below in the description. Also, don't forget I have stickers available on my website. So head on over there, get you some stickers if you're interested. I'd appreciate it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> tap handle. I don't like those kind of tap handles. I like the kind with the little chuck that tightens down, not this kind. They work, but wouldn't be my first choice. But if it's all you got, it works okay. You just have to drop your tap several times in the process. <clears throat>
Or what is that? Anybody knows, let me know, because I've always been curious about that. Hear it? He's loud. I'm still waiting for the trash truck. What are you doing out there? Playing games or what? Seriously, what is he doing? It's one, it's one little dumpster. Sounds like he's dumping 50. Oh, great. Now the battery's gonna die. Thanks, trash man. Change the battery. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, good lord, it's heavy. Holy cow. Thing's gotta weigh like 100 pounds.